welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori. And today we're making, sorry for the weird lighting. Let me try moving you forward a little bit. Is that better? Yes, we're making non-keto. These are not keto friendly cinnamon rolls for my family for Christmas. So I've got the process started. This is not my recipe. I got it off the YouTubes from Judy in the Kitchen. I'm gonna try really hard to remember to link the recipe or her video how she makes it, but I'm gonna walk you through the process. I'm pretty much doing exactly what she says, almost. Mm. The last of my peppermint mocha. Coffee. So right now I've, ass I've amassed all the ingredients and I will show you what we're doing. Um, a couple steps I changed from hers. I let my dough rest before I roll it out. And I have heavy cream because I don't have milk. So I use cream instead of milk um, in the recipe. So those are the changes that I made. Um, you do need a food scale. You should have a food scale. Now, this process works for any cinnamon roll recipe that uses instant rise yeast. That's the difference. Um, yeah, you want the instant rise not the short acting for this con, you know, this process. So let's get you turned around. I'll walk you through where I'm at right now. Okay, so right now back here, we are heating up. Let me get the, a spoon real quick. We are heating up, oh, my recipe. Three quarters of a cup of cream, a half a cup of water, and two and five eighths ounces of butter. This is what I mean when I say you need a, um, Ooh, way too warm. That went fast. I'll let it, it'll cool, it's fine. So I took that off the heat to let it cool. But what I mean is, so Judy in the kitchen used to have her own uh, bakery and she tweaked that this recipe to make it at home. So the two and five eighths is really five tape, two and five eighths ounces is five tablespoons plus a teaspoon of butter if you're gonna measure it. Uh, three quarters of a cup of milk is her recipe. I use cream and a half a cup of water. You want to bring it up to between 120 and 130 degrees. And I hit 150 while I was talking to you. So we're just going to let that cool. You don't want to put it in too hot because it will definitely um, kill your yeast. Now in this bowl, I have one pound, six and a half ounces of flour. I do not know what the conversion in cups. But like I said, any recipe will work. This is, I'm showing you a technique that I've learned and not the recipe itself, but we'll give you the measurements. One pound, 6.5 ounces of all purpose flour, a third of a cup of sugar, a half an ounce of rapid yeast, which is two packets, one teaspoon of salt, and you mix it pretty well together in the bowl. And then I have two large eggs. You kind of want to make sure everything is warm or room temperature. You don't want to start adding cold to hot and all that. And that's it for your measurements. Now it's just all kind of the technique. You do want a KitchenAid or some type of mixer. You can do it by hand, she says. Um, but I'm not really sure how that's going to work, to be honest with you. The other thing that... I'm doing is once I get this kneaded together because it has to knead on the dough hook for 10 minutes I'm gonna turn on the water. I have a pan of water to boil we're gonna make a proof box in the oven and what she says is all we need to do is turn on the oven light and put a pan of boiling water underneath these rolls once they're shaped and that'll help keep them moist and help them rise in the oven so while I'm waiting for my liquids here to cool off because right now we're at we're still over the 130 mark we're about 140 so i need this to cool i'm going to stir it just kind of let it come down and then i'll show you what happens when i mix it all together we brought it down to temperature and if you don't have a thermometer you kind of probably need one for this process but um you just want to make sure it's not too hot. You'll kill your yeast. Now, to keep my kitchen from getting nasty, I'm just going to pour this in over all this flour. Nothing too exciting there. And I'm going to stir it up. And Judy says we should do this to keep the mixer 
from tossing um, flour all over our kitchen. And I think that's a fabulous idea. Now, I'm not going to have you watch the video for 10 minutes because this has to need for 8 to 10 minutes on this dough hook back here. This is your dough hook on your KitchenAid. This is your whisk attachment on your, it doesn't have to be a KitchenAid, but this is the whisk and this is the paddle. We're going to use the hook. Now, I'll show you when I get it started, but I'm just trying to kind of get everything moist. <laughs> And then we're going to pour in our, oops, I need to lightly beat those eggs. So just with a fork, you just want to lightly beat the two large eggs. Now, she was a baker, so she says, you know, you want to measure things, you want to weigh it. That really is your most accurate um, form of measure is weighing things. Because cups and measuring cups for dry ingredients, depending how packed it is in the cup, can alter the amount of flour. But when you're doing baking like this, the moisture in the air can honestly affect it. So we're just going to stick this here. Let me move you closer. There we go. We're going to close the lid. I'm going to turn it on and let it go on low. As soon as it starts coming together, I'm going to let it knead for 10 minutes, probably. But right now it's coming together. You see how it looks? And you make sure you lock down your mixer because this thing will start dancing. This is not a professional size or the artisan. This is the smaller size, but it will work fine. I'm just going to go a little quicker here. I want to pick up all the goop off the side. And now it has all the, or most of... The dough on the hook is just going to knead for 10 minutes. Okay, I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to show you what you're looking for. So right now we're just going to get all this off the hook. And look, it's barely sticking to my fingers. That's a good sign that it's done. There's some elasticity to it because that's what we're doing is we're building elasticity. Let me take this off. Um, and building the gluten, I guess, is the best term for it. See how smooth it is? Baby's bottom smooth. But what I would like to do... Oh, well, that's not good. I think I need to get rid of that one. I bought some fresh. Ooh, some fresh. So we're going to... Pull this up out of here, but then I'm going to put it back in, kind of let it rest. You don't have to do this step, and Judy does not, but this is definitely something I will do for a couple reasons. I just think it helps, and it gives me time. I've got to go get my marble that I'm going to use to roll it out on, but I wanted you to see. Oh, it's like so soft and smooth, and there's a cat hair on it. Don't worry, I got the cat hair. It's not in it, it was on it. But if you see this, look, it's not sticking to my hands. It has a decent stretch. It's nice. So we're just gonna let it rest for a few minutes in here, covered with a cloth. And I'm gonna change out my wooden board for marble so we can roll it out. Okay. We are going to roll out our dough. Now this is a pastry board. I got it from a friend of my niece's, you know, parents, family friend. They, she was a chef. And when she passed away, it got passed on to me. And I appreciated it wholeheartedly. Um, it's nice, especially if you're working with like pie dough, things that you don't want to get um, melted because the marble will hold its temperature. It'll stay cold, I guess is better. And I have not mopped my floor yet. I was getting ready to and I said, oh girl, you need to wait to mop your floor until you uh, make these, because it gets a little messy. I have a little offset spatula to help me in case it gets stuck, but we let this rest for a little bit. I have the water back here. It's not boiling yet, but that is okay. 
and you just want to kind of get a little little flower on here you don't want to over flower any of this because if you do you're going to end up with a uh, really tough chewy dough so we're just going to give it a little pat rest it up a second which we did this marble is cold because it was in my garage. Um, that's okay, though. Ooh. I wish I had a little more counter space. And you're going to work it. This is dough. It's going to fight you back a little bit. But you're just going to keep trying to keep it in the shape of a rectangle. I'm going to leave an edge over here that doesn't have any butter on it. And this is just brown sugar and cinnamon. And this is my butter that I brought to room temperature. I'm going to probably use a couple tablespoons. Um, if you're not into using your hands, that's okay. Use a spatula. The cinnamon and sugar all over it now do you see why I haven't mopped my floor this is a hot mess but oh so good and then I'm gonna sprinkle it out and then pat it in and what that helps is when I roll it it won't go all over the okay it's gonna go all over the place but it hopefully will not all fall out which is what we try to avoid and I think she said something like a half a cup of brown sugar to cinnamon ratio no guys come on these are Christmas rolls so I put lots more than a, it's probably a cup of brown sugar I'd say I doubled it and then some you know all kinds of cinnamon and if you don't think there's enough which you can totally just taste it you know but if you want more cinnamon you want more nutmeg you want raisins in here do you want caramel now I'm gonna push it down it's nice and even but I'm kind of pushing the cinnamon and sugar into the butter and into the dough and I can even take my rolling pin and just do a quick push it in because I don't want it to all fall out when I roll it up so this is a little different than Judy does as well I'm just brushing off a little bit of the cinnamon and sugar off my hands. And then you're just going to start rolling. And you kind of pinch it and tuck. Pinch it, roll, pull. This is my, you know, you could cut this to be even, but come on guys, they're cinnamon rolls. We're not wasting any of this. So I do like a pinch in the middle. And then we're just going to pinch and roll. I'll speed this up. We're going to cut it and then we're going to switch directions of the camera so I can show you how I pan it. But I'm just going to take a regular knife, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, and I'm going to cut it in half. So we're going to do two pans. And the beauty of doing this on this marble is um, it's cold. And so the butter is kind of firmed up. So look at my roll. Oh, so exciting. And look at I got it half and half. So then what we'll do, and I just keep cutting them in half. So I just eyeball it, cut it in half, cut it in half, and then we'll cut this in half, and that, and then this one. And these are going to be the, si oh, the size of my rolls right here. And the little ones will probably end up in the middle. And the larger ones around the outside of the pan but this needs to um, it has to rise in the oven so that's our next step except for I have to get them in the pan <laughs> and because I don't have a lot of room in my kitchen there we go so there I just cut them all evenly as best you know eyeball it they're gonna rise and when they rise they'll kind of form their own shapes so let me grab my pans. I got to grease them up a little bit and then I'll show you how this is all going to get put together to go in the oven to rise for like 45 minutes, I believe. So one second. Okay. 
these are cheap Dollar Tree pans that have the lid. So what I'm gonna do, nothing too exciting here, guys. I'm just gonna space them out evenly in the pan. Just kind of let them do their thing. You really want them to have room to rise. So in this one, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's gonna be eight in each. I typically put the little one in the middle. And then if you wanna make them like more round, you can just kind of shape them in your hand. But again, they're gonna rise. Let me do this, put that over here. I just wanna kind of get the same shapes together. That over here, and there they go. So, these are going to go in the oven for about 45 minutes. The oven light is on, and I have a pan of water getting up to boil. So as soon as this pan comes to a boil, I'll put them in the oven and show you what I'm doing. Okay, here's the rolls. They are all ready to go in the oven. Now, like I said, if you wanted to make them smaller, you can totally do that. Cut the dough in half, you'll get like double that amount. But I wanted to give them, for Christmas, a nice hefty roll. Now my water is boiling. So this just goes on the bottom shelf. That's on the top, see the steam? Shut the door and do not open it. And don't look at my dirty window. It's all steamed up. So you're gonna leave it in there. I'm gonna set the timer for one hour and I'll check on it at like 45 minutes. All right, while the rolls finish in the oven, they're just rising. Whoops, they're almost done. Um, I have four ounces of cream cheese and about, three quarters of a stick of butter so I, you know if there's eight tablespoons I probably took out two or three I don't measure this here's some vanilla this is the cream cheese frosting that I use for the um, cinnamon rolls and since I'm gifting these in a sense I'm gonna bake them and then I'm putting this frosting in a container and I will take it to my family and oh sorry I will take it to my family and then we can heat them up and they can eat them. So I just put two thirds of a cup of powdered sugar in. You just have to kind of let this do its thing. Um, really want to keep scraping the sides. Now remember I don't do milk so I use heavy cream. If you have milk you can add some milk to it. Um, I do make this a little thicker than I would per Oh, timer's done. I make this a little thicker than I would for frosting cupcakes. Because um, we're going to spread this out. But I do whip it. Whip it good. So I just keep adding, you know, a little bit of everything until I get the consistency that I want. But I definitely need more powdered sugar in here. Um, probably four of these two-thirds cup measures. Now, since I'm not doing a lot, I'll be it's not gonna go all over my kitchen, but you definitely wanna let it kinda go. And then I let it whip for a little bit to get some air in there once I have enough of everything. And I'm making two batches, so. Let's see, yeah, I'm gonna need one more probably, one more scoop of powdered sugar, and we'll do two. And then I'll probably add some more cream to it. But you want to have, you know, sweetness. You don't just want to be butter and cream cheese. And then I need to pull the um, muffin or the muffins, uh, cinnamon rolls out of the oven so you can see what they look like. Since they've been in there for an hour. Oh. And that's what you try to avoid. 
the powder blow back. And I just put a couple drizzles. Cream goes a long way. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna flip you around and show you what the rolls look like and put the oven on. Hi, baby. Okay, oh, you guys. Look at this. Look how well they rose in the oven. And it's so humid in here, which is exactly what you want. And see how shiny they are? That one little step of putting a pan of boiling water in the oven. Now, you do want to raise the oven rack. So this will sit on the top. And look how, how high they rose. I wish you could see it. Look at that. They filled up the entire pans. So I'll bake them. I won't be able to put these lids on because they did rise above. I'll just cover them with foil after they've baked because I'm going to take them tomorrow and the next day. So they'll be fine. So right, ooh, all that we need to have happen right now is for me to finish up the frosting because I would like to <laughs> mop my floor and I won't be doing that until the frosting and powdered sugars I'll put away. But these are ready to bake. As soon as the oven comes up to 350, and then they'll be ready for um, to cool completely on the counter, and then I'll wrap them in aluminum foil. I won't refrigerate them tonight, and then one will go in my car for Christmas Day, and one will go to my knees for Christmas morning. I'll leave one in my car because it goes to my cousin, and one goes to my niece for her mom and stepdad and uh, brother. I'll show you when they're baked. And here they are. They, look how much they rose and they're nice and brown. They're not overcooked. I want them to be able to go back in the oven to warm up on Christmas morning or whenever. So right now they are just um, cooling. Here's the tubs of frosting for each family. Debbie gets a little extra because she likes the frosting. So there are my Christmas morning cinnamon rolls. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.